Hi, plant family. I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of our family, Chadwick B. As you can see, he likes plants too. Welcome to Peggy's Plants, coming to you from the Florida Keys. Recently, I was browsing eBay one night and found a Burl Marks fantasy that was up for auction. It was about to end and it was going for a reasonable price. So this is one of my wish list plants and I decided to get it. I wasn't planning on doing an unboxing, so I have already taken the plant out. This is the plant care instructions and the first line says, leave an original pot undisturbed for a minimum of 30 days. Now those are typical care instructions that you usually get from a, a plant seller. What got my attention is the fact that this package was in the mail for eight days it's priority mail, but it took eight days and the paper's wet. So if you look at the packaging, the box um, is labeled. It, you know, is asking to be kept from high heat, fragile. The packaging was great. No problem with that. Now I go on to look at the plant and this is what the plant was potted in. This soil is totally soaked. Now, eight days in this soil is still this wet. So I can ima only imagine how wet this was when this plant was mailed. So again, that's another concern. You can even tell from how much the soil is sticking to the pot just how wet this soil is. The biggest thing is I purchased this as a rooted plant. And as you can see, tiny root. Now, if I had not taken this pot, this plant from that pot to inspect the soil and inspect the roots, there's a good chance I could have rotted this plant because I would be acting as though it was a fully rooted plant. I would be treating it as such. And clearly this plant doesn't have those kind of roots. Because the seller does have a return policy, I am not going to give their name because I don't want to trash them or anything like that. But if I was buying this as a rooted plant and I just intended to grow it like that, I would definitely be contacting them about returning this plant or getting a partial refund at least because this is not a rooted plant. Um, I would normally take this and put it in water or sphagnum moss to develop a more of a root system so that I can grow this plant. I would not plant this in soil like this. This should have been um, sold, in my opinion, as a cutting. But the reason I purchased this plant is because it has so many nodes. Normally for a Burl Marks fantasy, you'll get one node and a couple of leaves. This one had several nodes, well, has several nodes, and that's why I purchased it. I figured I could cut this up, divide it. Um, see, it's got a few little leaves. I mean, excuse me, a few small roots coming out. Some of them are aerial roots. But I figure I can cut them into sections, root the sections, and then I'll have a nice full plant. So that's what I intended to do when I saw this up for auction and all of these nodes. So for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm going to show you how I'm going about cutting this up. Now, this was a stem that was just down in the dirt. I don't know if anything will come of it, but may as well throw that in the sphagnum moss as well. Now, this is just a um, Olive Garden salad um, takeout container with some sphagnum moss that I wet, squeezed it out, and then just put it in the bottom. And I like to fluff it out. I put some holes in the top with a soldering iron to give it some kind of ventilation because I like to do that. Yes, it does make the sphagnum moss grow out, I mean, excuse me, dry out a little faster, but I like to have the plants get a little air so that the um, they don't start smelling, the moss doesn't start smelling moldy or anything like that. So now I'm just going to go between the nodes and cut the plant into several parts. Now, a lot of times you'll see people go very close to the node. 
I like to, if possible, give some space between the node and the cutting. And that way, if the end for some reason decides to rot, you have some space to cut it back, cut it back before you get to the node. If you cut it too close to the node and it wants to rot some, there's a good chance you may rot your node. So that's why I like to leave a little space between the node and the cut ends. And here we are with six cuttings. So there's no guarantee that these will make it. Um, I'm thinking that most of them should, especially since they have some aerial roots. Here's my moistened sphagnum moss. And I just wanna say, if you can get a carry out container that is pretty much clear all the way around and has a lid, um, definitely save it, use it for propagation. I like that they let the light in from all sides. It's it's a great way a great way to recycle. So, next what I'm going to do here is this is just regular household cinnamon which happens to have antiseptic properties and what I do is I just dip the ends into the cinnamon to coat the in, the ends where I cut the plant and it will also help the ends to dry out faster. The reason you want the cut ends to dry out faster is the faster they dry out, the less susceptible they are to bacteria, to fungus, and to rot. So I'm just taking each cut in, tapping it into the um, cinnamon, and that's all I have to do. So next I just took each cutting and set it on top of the sphagnum moss and closed the container, obviously. Initially, I just left it sitting in the house on a table, not in direct sunlight because you have to keep in mind, these plants have been in a dark box for eight days and so they need some time to acclimate to light. If you don't give them that time to transition, a lot of times the leaves will burn. So give them a couple of days out of direct sunlight, um, out of light that's really bright, just to acclimate, and then you can move them towards um, more light. So what I did after letting them sit for a few days, I decided to put them in my grow tent, and that way they would get some nice light and it's warm in there. So after one week, this is what the plants look like. Now, it's not a drastic difference, but this is not typical of growth for one week. Um, these plants, the cuttings have rooted most of them. And if you can just look at the leaves, the comparison, the one on the right was when I first put them, cut them and put them on the moss. And the one in on the left hand side is what they're looking like today. Now, not all of them have rooted, but some have. They all have at least a little bit of roots except one. But the number of leaves on these cuttings has increased as well, if you can tell. Most of them had a, just a couple of leaves. Now most of them have like three or four leaves. So let me cover that root. <laughs> I don't like pulling them up if I, yeah, I don't like to disturb the roots. This one is kind of connected, so I'm not gonna pull that up, but look at all the leaves on this cutting. And you can see on there too, the roots on there. So the plant looks like it's doing well so far, and I will keep them these cuttings in here for another few weeks at least and let them to let them continue to develop and there i'll have my finally my burl marks fantasy i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching bye bye